Two words we think about spring walleyes. Search and destroy. Search and destroy walleyes. You got them both? Yeah, got them both. That's there. Kind of guy. I rely heavily upon my electronics to find those fish first. You just snip, 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 snip. Search and destroy, and you'll have success. Welcome to a new season of Angling Buzz TV presented by Fleet Farm. I'm Troy Linder. On today's show, we're talking about search and destroy tactics for walleye. Now, for many walleye anglers, they solely rely on live bait finesse fishing to catch these finicky fish. But the truth is, many times, walleye are an aggressive predator where high-speed aggressive techniques is the best way to catch them. Out in the field today, we're joined by Joe Nelson and garner some of his thoughts on some high-speed tactics to find and catch more walleye this season. You know, when it comes to search and destroy tactics and high-speed fishing, I think it's really important to have fish found first. I think so many people head out and just start throwing and casting at the bank. That's not always the most effective way, at least for me, to start out. And I really like to employ a trolling technique at first. You know, it makes a ton of sense to be able to pull out some crankbaits, find some fish on the electronics and pull through them, learning water, covering areas as you go. And it really makes a big difference to aid your power fishing later because once I locate fish, the crankbaits might not be the best way to catch them, but at least by then, I've got a few things figured out in terms of depth, location, I've got my side imaging on at the same time. And then I start working my way through other power fishing techniques. Right now, the water is still very cool. This is the early season where a lot of walleye are still shallow. What are some of your early season shallow water power fishing techniques? Yeah, if we're, if we're speaking about shallow specifically, so often I start out that trolling run and I see more fish shallow than I'm actually seeing on the 2D sonar right below the boat. So I start looking at jigs and plastics first and foremost. A simple jig and paddle tail combination it's really hard to beat because you can fish it all the way back to the boat. You can pitch it up shallow, work it, you can simply swim it back to you. There's a lot of ways to fish it and not many ways to fish it wrong. Okay, so let's go to the next level out, say like eight to 15 feet. Yeah, you know, if we're talking about mid-level depths, uh, I'm really thinking about fish that aren't necessarily up there shallow crashing on bait, but they can still be very active, especially in a good wind situation. And, whether I'm fishing murky waters down in the Mississippi River or areas by my home, or whether I'm on clear natural lakes, the lipless style crankbait imparts so many advantages. It's loud, it, it, it has so much vibration it sends through the water, so fish can find it quite easily. And I fish it very much like a jig. I let it settle down to bottom, I give a couple quick lifts and quick rips. You can feel it really well on the rod itself, and that tends to be a great mid-level bait for me off of weed lines, off of rocky breaks just on that next section of depth. Now what are some of your key baits for deep water situations? Yeah, if we're talking deep water, I really like spotting them on the electronics because deep water fish obviously mark so well. Whether we're talking about side imaging and then eventually going over the top of them on 2D sonar or down imaging, they show up great and you can really target individual packs of fish with big heavy lures like this Rippin' Minnow, I tell you, it's a wonderful bait because it goes down so quickly. This is about a half ounce variety. And when you fish a chunk of lead like that, that heavy, you get great feel, positive response on the rod. You're talking about 20 to 25 foot level depths. Really, you need something like that, but you also need enticement. So often people say those deep fish aren't active, they aren't eating. Sometimes they just need a little bit of enticement, a little bit of action, kind of elicit that reaction strike that I'm looking for. So that's why I'm fishing those aggressive style baits on those deep fish. Now let's say you see fish on your sonar, you can't catch them, you can't trigger them to bite. How long do you stay on them before moving somewhere else? You know, it's a, it's a great question. It's the age old classic, when to stay and when to go. And uh, I like putting together, just like any mystery, uh, a bunch of the variables and looking at my previous fishing, how has the bite been going? Are they biting at a pretty quick clip? What do my electronics tell me? Are, are fish belly to bottom? Or are they slightly off bottom and maybe swimming around a little bit? Those things will help me determine the aggression level of the fish. 
And if I think that fish are off bottom and moving around and the bite's been pretty decent that day, if I find fish, I wanna stay with them. I might just assume then that I missed them on a couple casts and I need to reposition the boat. But when it comes to just parking on them and camping on them, power fishing isn't necessarily the kind of bite where you sit on them for hours on end trying to get them to go. We're looking for the most active fish in the lake and a lot of times you're not gonna find them if all you're doing is sitting on a school of tight mouth walleyes. Yes, it can be frustrating seeing fish in your sonar and they won't bite. Many times they have the best option is just to go to another location. Absolutely, yeah. Pulling up stakes, leaving fish to find fish, a lot of people say you're not supposed to do that. But if you've uh, thrown the kitchen sink at them, so to speak, and you're just gonna sit there and uh, mark them because they're pretty marks on the graph, it doesn't do you a lot of good. Joel, thank you for your time and sharing some of your insights. that will hopefully help a lot of walleye anglers catch more fish this season. And after this short commercial break, we have more walleye search and destroy tactics as angling buzz continues. Stay with us. From the kennel to the coop, whatever the season, Fleet Farm has everything to keep your animals happy and healthy. Whether it's keeping the backyard birds well-fed season, mastering those retrieval skills season, or wondering who takes care of who season, there's a reason people say if Fleet Farm doesn't have it, you don't need it, because we have it all. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Customer first, that's their mission at Don DeLinger Auto. It's not just about the sale, it's about giving you peace of mind for as long as you own that vehicle. Don DeLinger is home to the lifetime powertrain warranty for new and pre-owned vehicles, plus 10 years of roadside assistance. They have an incredible variety of the most popular vehicles and offer pickup and drop off for service. Stop in to experience the Don DeLinger difference today. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with smooth moves. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. And today, again, we're talking about early season walleye search and destroy tactics. And I know many anglers, like myself, across the upper Midwest, we're excited about this time of year. Walleye are shallow, primarily speaking. They're big and they're hungry. And in our Timely Topics feature, we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper into some early season walleye tactics. when it comes to spring walleye tactics. Two words we think about spring walleyes, search and destroy. Search and destroy walleyes. Um, first thing that comes to my mind when I'm targeting walleyes in the spring is this right here, okay? My tactic when I think about spring, especially when I'm on lakes like Leech Lake, it's, it's all about covering ground. These walleyes are gonna be on these expansive sand flats and near some of the underwater points that Leech Lake is known for. In the waters I fish in Green Bay, we've got miles and miles of area to cover where these fish can be. Driving around three and a half, four miles an hour with your big outboard and graphing sections, um, seeing those fish, knowing where they're at, knowing that you're not wasting your time, you're putting your cast on fish is by far the most important advice I can give to you guys. I rely heavily upon my electronics to find those fish first. You know, I'll spend countless hours looking for fish with my graphs. I like to use my hummingbirds with my Minn Kota Altera. 
Delterra has side imaging on the motor itself, so I could turn the motor and look every direction. With today's modern electronic side scan, I can really dial those fish in, even in shallow water. And then I rely upon four different search and destroy tactics to get the job done. One would be jig and live bait. When you're out running and gunning for walleyes, it's really hard to beat a jig right. head. And there's no better jig head than a long shank fireball. My favorite way to cover ground, oftentimes in the spring, is just a standard jig and minnow, spot tail shiner. I like to go heavier, and uh, so I'll use a quarter ounce jig head sometimes in shallow water because the fast fall triggers bites. Shiner or a rainbow on there, and that hooks long so it gets back there and stings the there fish. You know. What I do is I'll put my vantage down, snap jig aggressively, covering ground till I locate fish. And while I'm doing that, utilizing side scan or side imaging, I'm looking for pods of fish off to the side of the boat because I'm on these expansive flats. Once I find those fish, oftentimes I'll talon down, I'll spot lock. Once you find them, all right? Once you find them, the first bait that comes to mind and has really taken on the walleye the world by storm the last few years, grapple or rip and wraps. Okay, number sevens and sixes and sometimes even fives. What I love about the rip and wraps is that slow fall kind of a mimics that dying bait fish. We're working these into kind of a rip jigging or a yo-yo effect, making bottom contact every time. Okay, this water is generally still cold, so you don't want to be moving the bait too fast. But it's a snap jigging technique, and these fish absolutely go nuts on these rattle baits. So, rapala, rip and wrap, super, super effective bait. Once things um, start to warm up a little better, even when it's still cold, I, I really like soft plastics. This is a, about a four inch plastic. I like using artificials more than live bait just because I can fish them much quicker. I can cover more ground. I don't have to worry about that minnow falling off. Mimic minnows with that paddle tail. Fish them just like a crankbait. Pitch it out and reel it really slow and that fish will just grab it. So mimic minnows, here's a couple of good colors I like to use. Once that water starts to warm up a little bit, baits like wrap with jigging wraps. Generally you need the water to get a little bit warmer. This is towards the end of that spring bite. Those fish are even more aggressive. Utilizing things like jigging wraps, jigs and plastics, pair jigs. I always have a rig. There's lots of things out there you can do. But really, finding those fish first, that's going to be your biggest key. The whole key is finding them, covering ground, being aggressive, seeking out active fish, and once you find them, casting to them. Just like that, finding them first pays big dividends. And finding ways to put more and more walleyes in the boat come springtime. Search and destroy, and you'll have success. Good luck. Well, there's a lot of great information there. I know a lot of walleye fishermen across the upper Midwest, they're very excited about the open water season getting into full swing right now. And stay with us. We have our buzz bite reports coming up after the short commercial break as angling buzz continues. can't choose the weather, but you can choose outerwear that works. Technical apparel. Rain gear. Soft shells. Sunwear. When you need to stay comfortable all day, choose Blackfish, because you can't choose the weather. In 2020, Minnesota watercraft inspectors found that 97% of boaters were doing their best to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. In short, drain plugs were removed, no standing water was inside the boat, and no zebra mussels or plants were found on the boat or trailer. Thanks for following these simple habit-forming rules. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from motors and live wells. Remove all boat plugs and dispose of unused bait in the trash. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. Northland tackles in the premium hardbait game. 
with the Rumble Crankbait Series. Available in 15 custom artisan colors. All Northland Rumble Series baits are handmade with a unique heat compression molding process that ensures unmatched durability and baits that run true on the troll and cast farther than the competition. You'll discover that walleyes and other species find their unique role in actions simply irresistible. You're going to want to up your game with these new cranks. Fishing is definitely better with balsa. Time report from Captain Jared Houston, Duluth Superior. How is everybody? Nice to see ya. Hey, we're been doing a lot of shore landing. I mean, we're going from one spot to the other, driving around in the old Jeep, got her packed up with some warm clothes, some rubber boots, because it's obviously wet, lots of puddles. Got my tackle, my rods, even got a grill and a cot there in case I spend the night somewhere. I'm looking for these panfish spots. They're not there yet because the ice really just got off real recent, so our water temperature's still getting up. St. Louis River, rough fish opportunities, carp, uh, suckers, you know, channel cats are always open for this time of year. Uh, sheep bed, freshwater jump, nothing's fun, you're catching a bunch of, you know, big poundage, poundage fish, so it's a lot of fun doing that. Smelt, they're just starting to fire up, so that's a real positive. And then obviously we got the small, you know, stream fishing. Pick your poison, man. Duluth Superior, that's what's so fun about living here is all the opportunities we have. And we'd love to share it with you. Rock and roll tight lines. Thanks, Jared. Now, walleye season isn't open yet here in Minnesota, but everyone's wondering where they're gonna head for opener. You know Brian Brosdahl is gonna be on Leech Lake. Leech Lake is one of the best lakes in the Midwest. Almost 115,000 acres of sprawling shoreline and is a walleye factory loaded with walleyes from eater size to true trophies. And that's where I'm gonna be. Walleyes and leech love windswept points around the opener and on, and 48 feet of water is key. Rocks are awesome. The walleyes like hanging on the rocks and they're, they're pounding shiner mills because the shiner's up shallow. On calm days, drop out to 10 feet of water. Long shank fireball jig. I like the stand-up style for slipping through weeds. If I'm bouncing across rocks, I'll use a long shank fireball jig from Northland in a round head. <clears throat> There's some great colors there, some perch patterns. Short shank, when you're using leeches or a half a crawler, work really well. But get out there and drag them and catch lots of walleyes. We'll see you on the leech. Thanks, bro. Now let's head north to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. Things are really shaping up to be another good year on Lake Vermilion. Early ice out. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we got the numbers from DNR Fisheries over in Tower. 37 years of sample netting on Vermilion. Uh, walleye results have never been better. Uh, pretty near record amounts on the east end and west end of the lake. A lot of those 14 inch size fish in there was pretty much the average. And also plenty of those 20 inch plus size fish that make a memorable catch. So that's really good news. Also in the netting, uh, the perch population is holding its own on the east end and near record levels on the west end too which is really, really good because that's the main forage for the walleyes on Vermillions. Opener is coming fast. Get your hooks sharpened up and we'll see you up here soon. Thanks, Billy. Based on those numbers, it's getting me real excited to get up on Lake Vermillion this summer. Thank you, Jake, for those reports. You know, the Angling Buzz staff here, we have a lot of different gas-powered machines that we use throughout the season. Every, you know, from, from ice fishing to open water, we're talking about four-wheelers, uh, snowmobiles, uh, of course, our outboards and then tractors, mowers, generators as well. You know, taking care of these is very important. And here's Brian Miller from Seafoam with some great information about keeping your boat motor in tip-top shape this season. We came up with Marine Pro as a complete marine fuel system treatment. It works as a cleaner, it works as a lubricant, and it works to stabilize fuel up to two years. As a cleaner, it works to clean carburetor circuits in older marine engines, and it works to clean fuel injectors in newer marine engines. It also adds lubricity to the entire fuel system, works through the tank, the fuel lines, into the engine's fuel pump, fuel rails, lubricates injectors, upper engine areas, and that's gonna reduce long-term engine wear. And as a fuel stabilizer, Marine Pro will not allow gum and varnish to form in fuel. Heavier fuel gum and varnish has always been the most common cause of marine engine problems. And just like seatbelt motor treatment, remember that Marine Pro is made from 100% petroleum ingredients. It's always safe and easy to use. Just pour it in. 
By adding Marine Pro to every tank of fuel, remember that it's always working to clean, lubricate, and protect the entire fuel system. It's gonna help your engine run smoother and last longer over the life of the engine. And you're gonna be able to sell it to the next guy in good faith. Simple, fast, and easy. This automatic launching and loading system on BoatToTrailer.com makes unloading and loading your boat a breeze on both roller or bunk trailer configurations. This system is a simple one bolt install. No more hanging over the boat, no more cranking in the boat, and no more wet feet. Speed your boat ramp time by visiting BoatToTrailer.com. Tired of doing this? Oh, yeah. Get a can of this and spend more time doing this. That one. Yeah. Whoa. Marine Pro Fuel Treatment helps marine engines start easier, run smoother, and last longer. Seafoam! Marine Pro, new from the makers of Seafoam. Marine Pro is a complete marine fuel system treatment. Just pour it in. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy. Available now at Fleet Farm. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. Well, today we're talking about walleye and we're gonna start out with some walleye fishing line. This is from Suffix, the Suffix Advance. This is actually great for a lot of different species, but specifically for walleye fishing, this is great to use as a main line or a leader, 50% less stretch than regular monofilament, abrasion resistant, very sensitive. I use this a lot for walleye, the Suffix Advance series. And I do like swim bait fishing, and narrow paddle tails, well that's tough to beat when you throw these on a jig head, you know, a uh, quarter ounce, three eighths ounce head. This is from Impulse Reactionary Baits. The narrow design on this, again, helps cut the water. So when you're snap jigging, it falls fast, triggers walleye to bite. This is a three and a half inch swim bait that absolutely pairs perfect to just about any jig head. Bucktail jigs have really come on strong in the last couple years in the walleye world. Here's a couple different options. This one is from VMC, this is the Moontail Jig. A few different sizes on this, really great walleye colors, narrow design, you don't need to use live bait, you don't need to use soft plastics. You just take this out of the package, tie it on and start fishing with it. And this is from Northland Tackle, this is the Deep V Bucktail Jig. Again, great colors, great design, great hooks, and both of these again, no live bait, no soft plastic needed. And a tried and tested lure, the Shad Wrap from Rapala. We have two different sizes here, both the size seven and size five. These can be cast, they can be trolled, they can actually be fished like a jerk bait. In this color, this is an exclusive Fleet Farm color. This one's Sky Tiger. I've actually used this not only for walleye, but also for bass and trout. Just a fantastic all around bait you want to have in your tackle box. And from St. Croix, this is the Icon Series Snap Jig Rod. This is a six foot eight inch rod. I've used this one a lot, not only for snap jigging, but also for bass, for throwing uh, crankbaits, swimbaits, jerkbaits, just a great all around rod, but it is specifically designed for snap jigging and it is awesome. It's perfectly balanced, uh, nice cork, kind of hybrid cork handle right here. Uh, great rod from the Icon series of St. Croix. Up next from Blackfish, this is the Zenith 2.0 soft shell jacket. This is a water, weather, and wind resistant jacket. Very comfortable, all season jacket. The zippers are really great if your hands get cold or you're wearing gloves, you can still access your pockets easily. The hood actually detaches. The inside fleece liner is very, very comfortable. And the cuffs are really nice. It cinches around your wrist, great to keep water and wind out. The Zenith 2.0 soft shell jacket. 
And to my left from Heavy Hauler Bags, this is the Angling Edge Shield Series Roll Top Backpack. Now this is a lightweight and heavy duty backpack. Uh, you can carry a lot of different stuff inside here. You have a front and side pocket, waterproof zippers, a nice little pocket for a water bottle. We'll flip this over. You can see it cinches down right here on either side. You can also carry it through this handle. It's a little bit of padding on the back and a little airflow channel in case it's hot outside. And you can secure it around both your chest and your waist. This is from Heavy Hauler, the Angling Edge Shield Series Roll Top Backpack. Over my shoulder here on the set, this from Balls Out Mount. This is machine aircraft grade aluminum. These come in a lot of different sizes and different options. Now you put a lot of investment in your marine electronics and you really want to secure them. And if you're a walleye fisherman, that means usually big water, big waves. So Balls Out has you covered with their different options of mounting systems. And finally from Smooth Moves, the Smooth Moves Ultra. Now this is an absolute back saver. When we're talking walleye fishing again, walleye chop, big waves are synonymous with walleye fishing. This easily installs in just about every single boat, 360 degrees of rotation, and you can adjust the tension from anywhere from 100 to 300 pounds, an absolute back saver, the Smooth Moves Ultra. Well, be sure to stop by your local Fleet Farm store and also online at fleetfarm.com for most of these items and a lot more. Up next, it's time for our Technique of the Week. When you're fishing these real clear water lakes like we're on, and you're fishing relatively shallow water, we're catching fish anywhere from as shallow Typical as six feet, point. even on a day like this, out to about 15 right now. And uh, you gotta get those casts away from the boat. These fish are spooky. You can see we're using artificial baits and we're fishing fast to cover water. And it's, and it's a lot of fun. And that's, you know, one way to trigger these fish. You can be very aggressive with them, which is, which is really great. When you don't have meat on there, you gotta fish it fast. You fish a little bit heavier jigsaw like that. It's a little bit better one, Troy. You, you really gotta snap that jig. Yeah, you know, it makes all the difference in the world. You don't underfish it. That's a nicer fish. It's not a big one, but it ain't a bad one. This daytime bite, we're just pounding, pounding these guys like. I want to show you the way they eat that, they eat that jig. When you're snap jigging like that, with hair in particular, you know, these fish, they are aggressive. Yeah, you know, and you see they're inhaling it. They're inhaling. It. And so many times you will outfish a jig in a minnow. When you're fishing this this time of the year, this bite, you know, the water's 47, 48 degrees, nothing, 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 day in and day out will I produce a jig on these walleyes this time of the year. Actually, I believe that's all times of the year, but the uh, location factors change. You can trigger these fish like this. You pop it, when that bait drops back down, they grab it. I mean, they're really crushing the bait. You just snap, 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 snap. Hair jigs can be very effective for walleye. It's amazing, you know, how great this works all throughout the season. You fish it right out of the package. You don't need live bait. You don't need any soft plastics. And next week's show, we're going to be talking about spring fishing for both walleye and crappie. And we want to remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you're leaving any body of water, remember, clean, drain, and dry. Thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder, and we'll see you next time.